at 1,000 feet up in the air, looking down upon people commuting on the tube, we had to admit it's quite a good way to get to work. The helicopter takes nine minutes to fly in from North Hole Aerodrome in West London, and suddenly, through the foggy windows, we saw this. The roof, 17 floors up, of the Royal London Hospital in Whitechapel and the helipad. The first thing to do for the team when the helicopter lands is to perform their daily checks to make sure that all the necessary equipment is on board for that day. London's Air Ambulance is also known as HEMS, that's the Helicopter Emergency Medical Service, and Graham is their lead paramedic. London's Air Ambulance is principally a, an urban-based trauma delivery system that uses a helicopter uh, and during the day and cars during the night to get an advanced trauma team to the most severely injured patients in London. So we cover up 10 million people with one team and we can get to them within about 15 minutes of the time they've had their accident. The Air Ambulance has its own dedicated two-man fire crew who must always be present every time the helicopter takes off or lands from the helipad on top of the building. And on board are two pilots, the trauma doctor and a paramedic team. At their base there's a storeroom with medical equipment, a kitchen area, operations room and an all-important meeting room where every day the entire team meet up to have a daily briefing. Yeah. Okay, good morning everybody, welcome to daily briefing. It's a late briefing at 1400 pilots. The briefing is led by the doctor, the key man in the operation. A popular misconception about the air ambulance is that it's there to get a patient quickly back to the hospital, whereas it's actually about getting a doctor out onto the site of the incident as fast as possible. It's very much about a transport platform to get the team to the patient. Air ambulances historically have been used to cover large distances to get patients from very relatively remote locations to the relatively few hospitals that can deal with their, their care. Uh, in the world. On the helicopter every day is one paramedic and one doctor. Tony Joy explained the difference. So a paramedic um, that worked for the R service, uh, R seconded from London's ambulance service and they have been uh, gaining experience at the roadside or at patients' homes um, working as paramedics. The doctors that work on the service usually come from a background either in anaesthesia or emergency medicine um, and have developed an interest in trauma care. The call uh, is filtered by the emergency operations control paramedic and if they decide it's something that they need to dispatch the advanced trauma team to, um, then they send us that job. We have a dispatch application on the iPad and that job goes through to the pilot. So we might know that we're going to an adult male who's a motorcyclist and is unconscious or mm -hmm. a, um, a female who's been stabbed or you know relatively little information. But it's obviously triggered the air ambulance paramedic in control to, to feel that it's appropriate for the trauma team. Tony takes us through some of the equipment so on board the, uh, the helicopter. Yeah. We carry a huge amount of kit uh, which enables us to deliver some fairly advanced medical interventions um, including anaesthesia uh, and our anaesthetic equipment we keep in this bag here. We've got a ventilator attached up here so if patients are ventilated we're able to um, do all the necessary things associated with that. We've got in this small yellow bag our uh, kit which allows us to do open chest surgery. Patients that have been, for instance, stabbed uh, in the heart. The most surprising thing that you may not know about the air ambulance though is that they rely on charitable donations for their funding. Yeah, in this country air ambulances have historically been charitably funded which some people find slightly strange and feel that it should be government funded. I think actually we are we have a funding model that's sort of a hybrid. We, we're quite lucky, in fact we're very lucky, that the uh, London Ambulance Service pays for the, the paramedics and Bart's uh, and the London Hospital pay for the doctors. And also they contribute um, further funding to us. And then the remaining of the money, about half of the money, is then raised by, by charitable methods. Captain Neil Jeffers is the chief pilot for the air ambulance and tells us that actually a helicopter is very easy to fly. There is a common misconception that it's quite hard to fly a helicopter. And don't tell anybody it's not particularly hard to fly a helicopter. There's one control, which is the up and down control. And if I remember, up is up and down is down. And that's good. We've got two pedals. They're there for steering the helicopter, but they're for steering in that axis. And if I push the left pedal, it goes left. And the final control is the stick. Just like a joystick of any game you've ever played, forward makes the helicopter go forward and back is back and left couldn't be much easier. But you have been flying for 18 years. Well, yes, that's right. But getting them all to work at the same time in the hover take, takes a, a few hours, but to, to each of the controls you can master within a couple of minutes. So if flying it is easy, what about landing in London? It is, and actually it's getting harder. 
you know, trees are growing, buildings are being built all the time, so our job is certainly getting harder over the years. The end of the game is that we will we'll know where the job is, we'll fly to it and get overhead, and then we'll spend probably two or three minutes uh, overhead orbiting, going around, flying around in a circle, both of us looking, assessing the best lines of access and the safest um, route for the doctors and paramedics to get there. What's the most interesting place that you've landed in, in London? We are allowed to land anywhere we, we like in London and there has to be a certain size, so about the size of a tennis court squared. There aren't that many places like that in London but they include places like um, Piccadilly Circus, Trafalgar Square, Horsecars Parade, City Hall, bridges, tops of multi-storey car parks. But the one thing they can't control, which does affect the helicopter, is of course the weather. I think if the cloud base got onto the gherkin, on top of the gherkin there, that's the sort of time we'd start thinking about not being able to fly. Mm -hmm. And the visibility needs to, be, needs to be a little bit worse than this before we stop flying. Back down below the helipad, we find the doctor and the paramedic crew rehearsing scenarios. They don't just sit around drinking tea, waiting for the next call to come in. The whole operation is efficient and organised, and best of all, you can tell, run by people who are completely passionate about what they do. In fact, the only thing that is missing is a second helicopter. Helicopters are, like all vehicles, um, requiring maintenance, requiring additional you know, uh, checks. And certainly when you're flying a helicopter run around London, you want to make sure it's absolutely as safe as you can possibly be. Because of that, there has a lot of maintenance for it, and that means that often there is downtime that means we haven't got a helicopter available. Um, we use cars when the aircraft can't fly, and that's great. So for us, if we can be more robust and have more resilience by having a second aircraft that we could immediately use if our first one was offline, that will mean that we get to more patients more quickly, and that's a hugely important thing for us. The air ambulance only operates during daylight hours. So on the day we went, with light fading just after four o'clock, it was time for the helicopter to fly back to North Holt for the night. But it will be back again tomorrow to add to its 30,000 missions it's flown on since its creation in 1989 and will never be able to exit Whitechapel Tube Station again without looking up and seeing the helipad on top of the roof of the hospital.